Saturday night. Welcome to a brand new series of the Jonathan Ross Show. Let's have a look in my green room series on the program tonight. We have one of our finest screen actors, from his iconic portrayal of Mr. Darcy to his Oscar-winning role as George VI. Ladies and gentlemen, it's Colin Firth. Well, Colin, a genuine superstar to kick off the new series. Colin stars in the fantastic new film Kingsman, and I'm thrilled we also have with him his co-star from that movie, a great young actor, one of the stars of Tomorrow, Mr. Taron Edgerton. <laughs> Hi, Taron. We've got the star of Men Behaving Badly, Jonathan Creek. Life begins. It is the always fabulous Caroline Quentin. <laughs> so and the sparkling blue top. My next guest is one of the funniest rising stars in comedy, Catherine Ryan. Yay! I love Catherine Ryan. You will love her as much as I do. And if we have enough time, we will put a bit of music on the end of the show. <laughs> well, unfortunately, thanks for that screaming, we probably don't have enough time now. <laughs> One of the biggest fans of this on the other time. Take a that. There they go. And have a little self-respect. <laughs> and later on in the program, you'll get the chance to vote one more of them off. So. <laughs> so. There's no doubting, I think, the most successful touring artist at the moment in the world. No, not them. No, not them. <laughs> you boys. Yeah, they're big, but they're not this big. This is the biggest star in the world right now. This is the man. Look at that. The Pope. There he is at a service in Manila, attended by six million people. Gary, what's the biggest crowd you've played to? A couple of hundred. Yeah. <laughs> Shall I tell you the Pope's secret, if you don't mind? Please. He, he only plays the old stuff. Doesn't do any new material. <laughs> Although we found some footage that proves he does do the occasional cover version. I got the fist of pure emotion. I got the head of shattered dreams. You got to leave it. You got to leave it all behind now. Whatever I said, whatever I did, I did not do that. I just want you back for good. I want you back. I want you back for good. <laughs> you see, that's how it should be done. Okay. Let's get my first guest out, ladies and gentlemen. He's an Oscar winner, a multi BAFTA winner. He is the effortlessly charming Colin Firth. Here he is. Colin, it's fabulous to have you here. Thank you so Thanks, much for joining us. Real pleasure. Thank okay. you. Tom. Well, here's the thing. Let me start by just asking you something. It's Oscar time coming up. They've named the nominations, of course. You won the Oscar, and I'm sure everyone knows this, for the King's Speech a few years back. So, belated congratulations for Thank that. Thank you. An incredible performance in a wonderful film. <clears throat> How is that on Oscar night when you're there, not knowing in advance, then, then winning? What's that evening like to experience? Yes, it's, um... Well, you're in a minority suddenly as a winner. Because I'd been there the year before as a loser, and um, it's, a, it's a much bigger party. <laughs> <laughs> because you're among the 80%, you know, not the 20%. Yeah. And, uh, and there's a real solidarity among people who are commiserating with each other. And so there's a little bit less hatred when you're one of the people that didn't, <laughs> didn't pick something up. So in a way, on the evening, it's, it's better to lose. It, for that night, it is, yeah. yeah. Yeah, you can lick your wounds the next morning. Yeah. Can you but... do that? I've tried. I can't reach. I don't know. <laughs> I mean. Well, we all have wounds in different places. <laughs> uh, of course, you were playing uh, the Queen's mother. Did you ever find out what, what the Queen's father? I'm sorry, that would have been that. <laughs> That's a film I want to see. Come, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You've obviously got intel. <laughs> um, uh, did you ever find out what she thought or what the family thought of that performance? Not directly, no. I ran into somebody who was distantly connected to the royal family while I was on a treadmill in a gym. <laughs> and um, it's not the best circumstances to really you know, have a conversation and process the information, <laughs> but um, I was assured that um, it was well received. 
uh, this, this year, the Oscars, of course, we've got, it's kind of like Howard versus Eaton. We've got Eddie Redmayne, we've got Benedict Cumberbatch. You've got two of the, you know, fine young actors, representing the, and I'd always assumed that you came from that kind of background as well. You and a great many people. Um, no, I, I was state educated. And I've run into people who, uh, when I tell them that I didn't go to public school, have I literally said, I'm spiralling backwards through space now. Yeah. Their whole social geography has just been scrambled. You seem like one of the poshest guys on the planet. Well, I'm a fake. You know, I'm... Uh, <laughs> that's the wonderful thing about my profession, is it's a, it's a wonderful... It's fertile ground for self-reinvention. Mm. You know, but... Um, I don't think... I didn't really do it on purpose. I mean, I was... Uh, you know, I, I, I had to adapt. I came back from Nigeria, and the, I, w I went to a school in Essex, and it was the first time I'd realised that people my age weren't... Who, I'd met people my age who didn't sound like my parents. Yeah. So I hastily tried to catch up and, and change the way I spoke. What was your Essex accent like? Can you uh, remember that? <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> well, how convenient. <laughs> um, I guess, in a way, I mean, the, the role which I think brought you to, to many people's attention, people knew of you before, but in 95, when you, you got the role as uh, Mr Darcy in Pride and Prejudice, that kind of put you on the map, didn't yeah. it? That was the one. Well, I thought I was on the map, you yeah. see. No, you weren't. No, was I not? No, you weren't. No. <laughs> um, well, it wasn't so much the level of attention, it's just how long it's lasted. It was 20 years ago. People still think about this, this scene, this you in the damp blouse. Um, well, it is a damp blouse. It's a damp I mean, blouse. The funny thing is, the whole shirt thing has grown as the rest of it's been forgotten. Yeah. And I was rising from the serpentine like, in, in plaster of Paris form a couple of years ago. Well, we have a picture of that. This is a weird thing. Look at this. This is a terrifying image. Look at that. <laughs> I don't want to take responsibility. Well, well someone has to. No, well, I... <laughs> Am I right in thinking that that scene initially you were not meant to be wearing the shirt? Oh, that is true. I was meant to, be, meant to be wearing precisely nothing. Nothing? Well, no, no you wouldn't whoop if you knew the truth. Imagine seeing a naked version of you, that big, rising no, no. out the serpent's eye. <laughs> well, we Godzilla. don't know what's lying under the surface. <laughs> is it like an iceberg? Is it mainly under the surface? <laughs> yeah. yeah, let's say so. <laughs> <laughs> the water levels rose. <laughs> uh, you have been with your wife now, I believe. Is it for 17 years you've been with... Uh, I early? think that sounds right, yes. Well, you, you really... <laughs> yeah, 17 yeah, years yeah, in... You really want to get the date. Yeah, want to get the date in your memory, yeah. Um, what did she think? What did she make of you being uh, held up as a sex symbol? What, did, what was her take on that? Well, uh, once the laughter had died down, um, <laughs> the next job was to try and persuade the rest of her family. Because I was in Italy at the time, we'd just met. And I proudly swaggered in among my in-laws and uh, announced the fact that I, I was now a heartthrob. <laughs> <laughs> they, they had the same response that... Um, that she had had yeah. <laughs> and uh, I went home rather hurt and um, and then it, it started to become a, a kind of almost sociological study among the family do English people find constipated repression sexy <laughs> <laughs> and I remember my mother-in-law saying so is John Major also sexy <laughs> <laughs> And, and all this the business of trying to deconstruct, you know, what it is about English people that would respond to something that they found as profoundly unattractive as my character. <laughs> mm. But after 17 years now, A, they must have accepted that's a fact, and B, I imagine you can communicate with them more directly. Your Italian must be pretty good now, isn't it? It's functional. <laughs> what will often happen is I'll say, um, I don't know, ciao, and someone will say... Cosa detto? What did he say? <laughs> and then someone said, ciao. <laughs> and so I, my, trans, my Italian gets translated into Italian by, by an intermediary. You know, buongiorno. What? Buongiorno. Ah, buongiorno. <laughs> and, um, and then, of course, you go through the gaffes, you know. Uh, I, the interesting thing is that the better you are at a language, the more comical your gaffes become. Because if you can't speak the language at all, there's not much to laugh at. But if everything in your sentence is OK except one word, which is almost OK... Yeah. Then, of course, that, that's when disaster hits. Well, like what? Which kind of words? Well, I mean, you know, penne, pasta. You, in Italian, it's very important that you pronounce a double consonant. There are two ends in the word. So you say it, how do you say it properly? Penne. Penne. So you're beginning. It's the best I can do with it. Penne. Uh, and um, that is the pasta. But if you say it with, if you say penne, which is one N, you're asking for a penis. Wow. And, um... <laughs> or maybe a whole bowl of penis. Well, 
Well, to be, you know, you have to be careful how much you ask for yeah, and wow. what you want. And, <laughs> and you've got to be very careful when you ask what sauce well, you want on it. I mean, well, that could be a... Well, arrabbiata means angry, you see, because <laughs> it's spicy. An angry penis, please. <laughs> Well, Italians are very obliging, so <laughs> you have to be very, very careful <laughs> what you ask for. Uh, let's talk about the, the new movie, uh, Kingsman, The Secret Service, which I should say, in the interest of full disclosure, was written by my lovely wife, Jane. But it's my favourite of the movies she's, she's made. I adore it. Tell people what it's about. Those who don't know already, who haven't seen a trailer, how would you explain Kingsman? Uh, secret spy organisation. They're all codenamed Galahad, Lancelot, Arthur, so there's a, a bit of a reference to King Arthur and his knights. So it's the... It's the modern-day spy as, uh, as the modern knight, if you like. And um, it, the, their cover is uh, Savile Row tailors. So it's all clothed in this um, veneer of, of the gentleman. And uh, so it's the gentleman spy. It harks back to a kind of vintage era of the gentleman spy. I like to think the original Ian Fleming concept. Yeah. You know? And... Um, my character, who's a veteran, um, is grooming the young fellow. And there's that, a bit that, of snobbery. The, the use of that word grooming there, I think, might not uh, be... <laughs> yes, it's, uh, it's been tainted, hasn't it, of late? Yeah. His mentoring. Well, there's an awful lot you don't see in the... <laughs> <laughs> so he has a young charge that he has to try and uh, bring out the best in. That's right. So there's a kind of My Fair Lady reference in a way that... Um, because the... the, what, the the, the one great failing of our organisation is there's a kind of snobbish old boy network flavour to it. And, and so, quite aside from our, our skills and our noble agenda and all the rest of it, we, um, there's a tendency to shut out people who we, we consider to be the wrong sort. OK, well, we have a clip to show you, ladies and gentlemen. This is from Kingsman Secret Service. It opens Thursday all over the UK. Here we go, look at this. Excuse me. If you're looking for another rent boy, they're on the corner of Smith Street. Manners maketh man. Do you know what that means? Then let me teach you a lesson. going to stand around here all day, or are we going to fight? <laughs> I'm going to show you a bit more. Now, the reason, the reason I stopped you there is, this is in the movie when I, I, my heart was in my mouth. Because when I think you're going to fight, this is what I think we're going to see. That's not what you need in an action film. I don't see the difference. <laughs> <laughs> OK, I'm going to show you the difference. This is, we're going back to Kingsman. This is how it plays out. Look at this. See, in my mind, they were all Hugh Grant. <laughs> <laughs> it was round it's two. It's been a long time in, 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 for payback, yeah. But do you, uh, joking aside, do you, um, when you've done that kind of training, and obviously that's choreographed, but when you've got yourself in good shape and you've done those sort of, and you've learned how to dodge and parry, do you ever feel like maybe this could benefit me in real life? Does that enter your head? No. Well, I mean... <laughs> I had an encounter, and I was, I was actually, while I was training for this, I'd, I'd done months of this. We're doing three hours a day every day for months, six months or something. And I was, I was working in France, and I, I had a road rage encounter with a very, very um, aggressive driver who, you know, basically forced me to a stop and got out. And I, I had that whole 
calculation that Robert Downey has in Sherlock Holmes, where he, you know, t takes the measure of everything. And I thought, my, all my reflexes kicked in. And uh, at the end of it, I, I promptly apologised. <laughs> um, which I like to think was my reflexes. Yes, you know? uh, and probably that's one thing we can all learn, isn't it? Yeah, absolutely. Ultimately, the best way out of it is mm. the back door. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, he's going to stick around, but for now, will you join me in saying thank you to Mr Colin Farr? Thank you. Thrilled to come here on the show, Taryn Edgerton, we're out here, Caroline Quentin, Catherine Ryan, and music and chat from Take That, so don't go away. <laughs> Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Mr Colin Firth is still here, he's going to be here for the whole show. I'm excited to say, but let's bring out my next guest. Tremendous young talent. He stars alongside Colin in Kingsman Secret Service. Will you please welcome one of the big stars of tomorrow, Taryn Edgerton. <laughs> That's a nice, that's a nice hug. Still talking. I'm pleased to see that. <laughs> Very warm welcome, despite the fact no one knows who I am. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Not for long, though. Great performance in the film, really. Thank you, mate. Genuinely, I'm knocked out. And you play uh, the kind of street kid who is uh, taken under Colin's character's wing. Uh, and the accent you get dead right, but you're, 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 you're sort of Welsh, but you were born in Wales, is that why? Right? Yes. <laughs> That was a Pavlovian reaction. <laughs> it was. All it takes is three Welsh people to sound like 300. That's all I know. Um, yeah, my parents are actually... My grandmother was Welsh, but my parents are Liverpudlian. So you consider yourself Welsh, do you? Or? Uh, through and through, absolutely, yeah. You speak any of the, uh, the Welsh language? A bit of the old lingo. Um, it's not as good as it once was, but I get conversational Welsh, yeah. And, and do you enjoy speaking it? I do. It's, it's, it's a beautiful language, and one, it's, a, it's a great pleasure to speak. What would be a useful phrase for me or for Colin or anyone else wishing uh, to pick up to, get to, to make the Welsh people embrace us? OK, um, so for you, you could say... Uh, Okay, uh, the N-O-E. The N-O-E. Adi Jonathan. Adi Jonathan. Croisoi Irshoi. Croisoi Irshoi. She says, hello, my name is Jonathan, welcome to the show. That's very nice. Thank you very much indeed. <laughs> hello, Wales. <laughs> but uh, you will in Aberystwyth. Uh, yes, Aberystwyth, yeah, that's where I, I kind of consider home. I moved there when I was about 12, yeah. And didn't you live in the place that had that absurdly long name, didn't you? That's where I went to primary school, yeah. Okay, so there it is. So presumably that trips off your tongue very easily. Wow. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Yes. Yeah. We'll move on from Wales. Let's move on from Wales before <laughs> I embarrass <laughs> myself any further. Okay, yeah, no, you haven't at all. Uh, so this is, am I right in thinking? I mean, and this is what a, a daunting prospect I would have thought this would be for a young actor. This is your, your first sort of acting jog in a movie. Yeah, absolutely, And yeah. you're co-starring with Colin and Sam Jackson. I know. It's... That must have been pretty terrifying, or was it not? No, of course. I mean, the, the pressure was and is monumental, but, you know, when you're working with blokes like this man to my left who are incredibly uh, nurturing and encouraging and supportive, they do a lot of the work for you, really. That's so, so nice. So, uh, and so they went out of their way to make you feel at home? And... Absolutely, yeah, absolutely. Colin... Um, I, I hate to say it, ladies, and some men, he is every bit as perfect as he seems. Wow. Um, <laughs> Isn't that nice? <laughs> you know, and I think we can, we can tell from looking, cos one of them is sitting like a gentleman, the other one's showing us his balls. <laughs> <laughs> I've been told, actually, by my publicist not to crease the arm, are <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I see, so that's going back to the store, is it? <laughs> yeah. You I was taught by my maiden aunt. <laughs> <laughs> so you're, you're 25, is that what I'm I am 25. Wow, wow. So this is uh, an exciting time in your life, I It's crazy, yeah. It's, um, I mean, it feels like last week that I was working in Peacock, so, you know, to be here <laughs> with your good self you. is, um, is something of a thrill, yeah. Uh, how did you find, uh, as a young man, I mean, Colin was talking about the workout he had to do in the preparation, did, you, did it come easier to you, do you think? Did you have to work just as hard? Oh, God, no, no. I like beers, pizza and television, so, I mean, to have to whip myself into that shape, it was... Um, I mean, it was great fun, and you can't actually perform those stunts unless you are at a certain level of physical fitness. But, um, yeah, it was tough going. It's like an homage to the early Bond movies, isn't it? Were you a fan of those? Did you see them even? Cos you're just a baby, really. Have yeah, you heard of James Bond? Middle, do you know what I'm talking about? Middle-aged people do this. They presume. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> So, there's this... Colin! I don't know. He's I'm talking about I... you as well. Yeah, there he is, is. I know. All too well. 
There's this amazing thing now called Google and iTunes, right? <laughs> so you Hold can it. go Let back. Let me write that down. Yeah, write it down. <laughs> yeah. Is that a Welsh word? Googly iTunes. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yes, I did. I watched um, my favourite as a, as, a, as a young lad was Live and Let Die, Roger Moore. Good one, good choice. Yeah, good and choice. I think this film is very in the spirit of Moore and Connery, you know? Gimmicks, gadgets, big villain, all that all kind of, of that, thing. Yeah. What's the worst thing to, when you start working out, what's the worst thing to exercise? What's the thing you dread the most? Chin, Any, chin ups. Chin, up. chin ups, was it? Yeah. Lower body, anything lower body. Because, I mean, if, if you're an English middle aged man, your leg, what are your legs for? They're my to, legs are. Well, they're to get to the car and then to the desk. <laughs> yes. You know, and that's basically what I'd employed them for over the years. And, uh, and so to actually get that going was, um, that's the worst. I can't wear shorts in Italy. People try and put a fork in and twiddle it around when they see me. It's like, uh... Mi dispiace, non parlo italiano. Listen to that. I had an Italian... It's better than your Welsh. <laughs> it's better than my Welsh. <laughs> Googly iTunes. Um... <laughs> Um, let me ask you then about uh, what you do after this, because I know there's another project coming up immediately afterwards, which could not, in some ways, be further. That's uh, what, yeah, yeah, quite. For this, I would have thought, and and it surprises me because you are you're not a bad-looking guy. Thank you. I mean, you're no, you know, heartthrob, but you're not bad. <laughs> um, uh, but what are you playing next? What's the big next movie role for you? Uh... I am uh, playing Eddie the Eagle uh, in a film about his experience. Thank you. There we are. <laughs> Seriously. A few titters of recognition. Let that settle in for a minute. Now, I don't... <laughs> hey, Eddie's a good-looking guy. <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm, uh, we're making a film about his experience during the 90s. <laughs> Hold it. That's an uncanny likeness. I can see why they... Just you wait, mate. Just you wait. OK. Um, uh, we have some Eddie the Eagle glasses here. Of course you do. And Hugh Jackman is playing uh, Eddie's trainer, isn't he? My coach, yeah. I mean, we, know, we all know what Hugh Jackman looks like. We have a picture of the coach. I don't see the similarity between them. Do you know what Hugh he looks like? I don't, actually. Hugh, no. is. This is the picture of Chuck, the coach who actually looked after Eddie. So you see... <laughs> so I think... I think that's him. We had trouble finding a picture. No, but now I've, now I've now seen it, see jogged it. my memory. Well, now we can see why Hugh Jackman's doing it, mm. because it's... Uh, yeah. OK, let's have a look at the Eddie the Eagle. Uh, have you seen him in these glasses? I yet? haven't. Okay. No, no. Everyone's going to want a pair after this, I'm telling you. <laughs> OK, so shut your eyes for a minute. Remember, this is... When was it? 1990? When did this happen? When did Eddie the Eagle? Uh, the year before I was born, 88. Okay. Oh, rub it in. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> 1988, this was what? This was our great Olympic either. hope at the Winter Olympics. Right now. That's pretty good. That's pretty good. Yeah. good. You've got a, a similar shaped head. Oh, well, thank you. Lovely. Yeah, no, no. That's pretty good. Well, congratulations. We'll look forward to that. Can you ski? Not that that was really a problem, because I don't know if Eddie was... Uh, we're all working on it at the moment. Don't so fear, we'll be all right. So you're trying to ski. Colin, you must be able to ski. Um, I uh, conquered the, the Bunny Hill okay. many, many years ago. Is that a yeah. sexual thing? I'm not sure. <laughs> It might be to you. Um... <laughs> but at my age, middle age. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> the thing we should uh, point out, perhaps, is uh, you really started acting and you kind of burst on the scene about the same age as a town is now. Is that correct? You were in your. Well, I don't know of... if I burst on the scene. <laughs> <laughs> Lim yeah, limped. I did. Yeah. <laughs> I kind of sort of heaved myself into motion, yes, around that time. Uh, we have, believe it or not, we found a clip of one of Colin's very earliest uh, performances on television. I thought you might like to see this talent. I'd be excited. And I think you might like to see this as well. Do you remember the TV show? Uh, it was a nice TV show called Crown Court that used to in the afternoon. Oh, and it was a weird... Uh, it, was <laughs> no. a weird it was on every day, I think, wasn't it? <laughs> yes, <laughs> I think it was. And, and the cases weren't the most exciting cases. No, well, no, my case was about a man who stole a copper cylinder from That's someone's it. back garden. Yeah. <laughs> I don't think he's joking. Amazing. Have a look at this. This is Crown Court from way back in the day. He said, take it, it's nothing to do with me. I then retrieved the copper <laughs> cylinder from under the lorry, ascertained that it fitted the description provided by Mr Sibley and cautioned the accused. Constable Franklin, is the copper cylinder, exhibit one here, that which you found in the accused's possession on the morning of the 10th of September 1982? It is, sir. <laughs> well... <laughs> That was me bursting on the scene. That was <laughs> well. Already. Look at that sense of, of civic pride yeah. coming oozing off you. See, you, you don't have that, which is why you've got off to a quicker start. Yeah, the, you yeah. Know. I don't know. Is that a compliment or not? Yeah, no, it is civic pride. 
Yeah, you can see why I wasn't getting the bad guy roles. But I imagine at the time that was quite a big deal getting that part, wasn't it? Was it quite an exciting thing it to was. get? It was. I used to be addicted to it when I was pretending to be ill home from school. <laughs> I'd switch that on and I'd be, I'd, I couldn't wait to see whether the guy had taken the copper cylinder. <laughs> <laughs> it was enough for us back then, wasn't it? It was. See, Talon, you don't no. know what you missed. <laughs> Uh, Tower Knight, Save Your Confidence, the, the film is going to put you on the map. I don't know whether, you know, it will be quite the same splash as when we saw a, a let's face it, very sexy man come out of a lake wearing a pair of Victorian white fronts. <laughs> but uh, you're here, you've arrived, and it's a terrific film, and you're great in it. Ladies and gentlemen, Tower Edgerton. Thank you, Tower. <laughs> it's great to have you here. Will you stick around, I hope? Yeah, please, please yeah, stick please. around as well, because still to come on the show, Tower Knight, Frank will be here, Catherine Ryan, and, of course, take that, so don't go away. Welcome back. Let's get my next guest right out. This is one of my favourite actors from Men Behaving Badly, Jonathan Creech. is about to start on stage in an adaptation of the classic novel The Life and Times of Fanny Hill. Will you please welcome Caroline Quentin? <laughs> So, Caroline, yeah. I, I believe you're a fan of, obviously, the fellas here, but also you're a bit of a Take That fan as well. <laughs> you, you know, you can, you can go off a band, you know. Um, <laughs> how is it mingling with the fellas backstage? you enjoy that? It's great, actually. It's really great. They, um, they hold quite a special place in my heart because when I first met my darling husband, Sam Farmer, um, he had not really long been out of a, a rugby club and uh, when they were on tour, the, the, the rugby boys, all six foot eight, big cauliflower ears, used to learn a take that number and then they would go to a club in Leicester or Bradford or wherever it was and they would take over the entire floor wow. to try and pull girls and um, they used to do a Relight My Fire. Yes. Yes, I know, it's marvellous, isn't it? And when I first met Sam, he told me that bit of information. I was quite impressed. And so before I'd let him do special cuddles mm -hmm. with me, um, <laughs> I made him do Relight My Fire with no clothes what? on. <laughs> well, well, that'll get you... I did it! <laughs> I'm sorry, Sam, he's going to be very cross wow. with me. Ooh, you know, that's interesting, though, because um, when Gary said he wanted to do my show the first time, I made him do Relight My Fire with no clothes. It's worth it, isn't it? <laughs> no, that wasn't. No, no. Uh, <laughs> Exciting news that you're back on stage. You're yes, be back I on am. The stage yeah. here in Bristol Old Vic, isn't it? That's, That's right. Yeah. First in Bristol, and I'm doing um, the Life and Times of. Oh, thank you. Do come. Um, the Life and Times of. <laughs> The Life and Times of Fanny Hill. Okay, well, this was... There I it... am. Look, that's me wow. with a big, big wig on. That is quite a wig. Yeah. Uh, and this was, in its day, a very raunchy piece of work, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah, definitely. It was kind of first pornographic novel of its day, really, written in about 17, mid-17... Uh, 1750, I think, something like that. And uh, it was um, banned because it was obscene. And it's a series of um, sexual adventures of, of, of young Fanny Hill... And uh, the way we're doing the play, it's April Dandridge has written a story whereby um, old Fanny and <laughs> young... Look at me like that. <laughs> I don't think old Fanny to this young man. Um, <laughs> Honestly, he'll take any Fanny he can get. I mean, <laughs> I mean he's um, 25, he can't believe he's that. <laughs> so, thank you. Um, so, there are two Fannies. Oh, I'm not getting any better, is it? There are, uh, um, yeah, so Fanny Hill. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, this is going to be difficult. Fanny isn't one it? and Fanny two. <laughs> uh, yes, there, there's an old Fanny and a young Fanny. I play the old Fanny. Thank you. And um, and the story is told of Fanny's um, adventures, really, from the time <laughs> when she was a young a young working girl to when oh, she's an older working yes, yes. girl. Can I just say, will you grow up? <laughs> This I is a work of literature. No, but Jonathan, this is exactly what we're like in rehearsal. <laughs> None of us can say anything to anybody. And the minute someone says Fanny, we all go into creases and we have to stop. It's pathetic. <laughs> OK, well, I'm going to read it now. We've got some quotes here. I, don't, I couldn't believe how... Uh, it it's is rude. Really it's rude. Full Properly on. rude. Properly rude. Yeah. Have you ever read it, Colin? I don't think you have. I have not. No, no, no. <laughs> I'm certainly going to read it now. Uh, I will give you a quote from this. Here you go. Colin, why don't you read them? Because you've got a... <laughs> Because oh, yeah. it won't stand, it won't, it, if I do it, 
Just choose one or two. I have because got... if I do it, it will sound sleazy. Can I say I haven't got my glasses on? OK. Yeah, uh, All right, do you want to buy any of the Eagles? <laughs> Bless you for that. Put, put another patch on and calm down. <laughs> <laughs> then, being on his knees between my thighs, he drew up his shirt and bared all his hairy thighs <laughs> and stiff, staring truncheon. Goodness <laughs> me. <laughs> wow. <clears throat> Number two. We could observe pleasure lighten in her eyes as he introduced his <laughs> plenipotentiary <laughs> instrument, instrument. Yes. into instrument. her. Yes. Wow. Number three. <laughs> You're making it sound like a tax bill. <laughs> <laughs> you know what we used to do? When, when we had the, the, those stories in the porn mags going around the school when we were 14, yes. we used to read them out in that Monty Python voice. <laughs> Which one? Well, it was the one that... that then being on his knees between my thighs, he drew up his shirt and bared all his hairy thighs. I'm and gonna do it like that. I'm gonna do it like that. <laughs> uh, you don't want any more. Yeah, no, you. that's more than enough. I'm taking that home. Yeah. We'll read that later. All right. <laughs> <laughs> and they're singing on stage as well. It's not a musical as yeah. such, is it? It's not a musical, but we are using lots of traditional songs of the period. Right, so. Right. Um, we're dancing and singing and playing drums and there's all kinds of cavorting. Can and... you give me an idea of the lyrical content or what kind of... Um, one line is, um, One word from you more and because I'm a whore oh. I'll kick your ass over both steeple. Wow, that's pretty good, isn't that? <laughs> yeah. And the next line is, he goes, We light my fire! fire <laughs> Okay. But you started out on stage. I mean, we know you, I know you, for your TV work. Yeah. Primarily, but you started out on stage in the first place. Uh, do you get nervous stage performer? Are you nervous going back on stage? Yeah, I do. I mean, I was in the West End um, last year. I did two different shows last year, one a musical and one a play. And I do suffer from nerves still. I still get quite uh, ill before shows. I, I still suffer from kind of sickness and stuff before I go on. But for me, it's about, um, it's about conquering that first night and getting through and and kind of meeting an audience, you know, really feeling like um, you make a connection. I still really, I love that part of it. I like, I like hearing an audience laugh and I like being with them and, the and feeling we've that, shared yeah. something, yeah. Colin, you, I mean, I know you've done stage work over the years, not for a while now, I guess, but did, were you a nervous performer when you were on stage? Did you used to suffer from nerves at all? Oh, yeah. The last time I was on stage was quite a few years ago now. I had a complete meltdown. I mean, I, on first night, I, I, I was sharing a dressing room. It was the Donmar Warehouse. It was very tiny. And I just needed a moment to breathe. And uh, I just I thought, where can I go that's alone? And the Donmar Warehouse has no uh, stage door, so there was a fire door, a fire exit. So I went out there just to breathe ten minutes before the show, and it closed behind me. <laughs> but I had to go around the front on the first night. <laughs> oh, and God. Push my way through the first night crowd, all the very people I was most terrified of. <laughs> and then pound on the pass door to beg to be let back in. So I'd get, and then the next thing was just someone pushed me on stage. Um, but in a way, maybe that helped, didn't it, on that night? Maybe that... I think if I'd been left alone, uh, yeah, I'd, we'd be reading stories in the press about how it was last seen in Antarctica or something. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right, so, uh, so how long are you on stage? How long are you doing Fanny Hill for? Uh, we've got four weeks booked in Bristol and then I think possibly it'll find a home elsewhere. So maybe come to London uh -huh. or go elsewhere? Yeah, hopefully. OK, that starts on the 5th of February at Bristol Old Vic. It sounds like it's going to be so much fun. It will be fun. OK, I'm really looking forward to seeing it. Ladies you. and gentlemen, the fantastic Caroline Quentin. <laughs> OK, Caroline is going to stay with us. Still to come after the break, fabulous comedian Catherine Ryan will be out here. And take that, we'll be chatting and performing live. See you in a couple of minutes. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Let's get my next guest right out. She's the hottest thing to come out of Canada since... Well, she's probably the hottest thing to come out of Canada ever. It is Catherine Ryan. Hello. Thank you. Come on in. Hello. Hi, nice to see you. Hello. 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 Hi. You've got to shuffle along. Everyone shuffles right. along. OK, lovely to have you here. 
Thank you very much for you having me on. You live here in the UK, originally from Canada, though. Uh, a, a beautiful country, of course. Yay. Whereabouts? There you go. Um, no, I'm that not. That was a Welsh person. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not from that part, no. no. No, I am from the depths of uh, despair in Canada. It's called Sarnia. And, and yeah. it's, uh, it's an industrial kind of town, isn't it? Uh, it is the petrochemical hub of North America, wow. if you're ever looking to make a mess. Yeah. And <laughs> it, um, the way, it looks quite beautiful. Wow. Yeah, there it is. Gosh. It's like Aaron Brockovich, you know that film? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's a bit like that. That's got to be dangerous. Though they promise me it's not. They say, oh no, we've looked after everything, it's totally clean. <laughs> I feel like that doesn't look... I mean, I turned out this way, so there's an indication. <laughs> I imagine you must be the biggest star to emerge from, uh, from Sarnia or that part of Canada. No. No, we've got a golfer. Um, he's called Mike Weir. He's pretty good. Um, Justin Bieber is from not far. Justin Bieber? Yeah, he's from well, Stratford. Well, that would be the chemicals. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I know. The best thing I ever heard about Justin Bieber, I forget who said it, he looks like a single dad trying to reconnect with his teenage son. <laughs> <laughs> Justin Bieber is horrible, isn't he? <laughs> <laughs> oh. Well, we should just uh, we should qualify this. Uh, have you met him? Can you say this from some experience? Listen, it's not his fault. I have met Justin Bieber briefly. <laughs> and I, I, uh, I think you need to hear the word no in your life. And the poor lamb, I mean, he hasn't heard the word. That's why I've come to the UK. Look what happens when America's interested in you. I don't want that happening to me. <laughs> Uh, you have a daughter, you have a, a young daughter? I have. Is, it, is she allowed to watch you work? I mean, does she see you? When you do panel shows like 8 out of 10 Cats and those yep. shows, Mock Week, that kind of are you, does she, do you let her watch that on TV? Absolutely, I do. Um, my daughter Violet is five and a half. She'll be watching. She's a big fan of yours. <laughs> oh, well, that's nice. She loves Jimmy Carr. <laughs> ah, so that's his audience. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> she gets a bit shy. She'll go, Mommy! Oh, because she's English. Yeah. I did not see that coming at all. <laughs> but she hid it very well as a baby, you can yeah. tell. That she's English at all <laughs> for about a year, and now I see the British are sneaking into their own country through my body. Why would they bother? Why would they do that? <laughs> Nigel Farage didn't see that coming. <laughs> she gets all shy. She goes, "Will Jimmy be there, Mommy? Will you see Mr. Jimmy Carr?" I say yes, and she's like, <laughs> she likes him. She loves him. She's cool. I know everybody loves their kids. Most people are wrong. Yeah. Most kids. <laughs> Most kids. <laughs> When you're touring, do you take her with you on tour? Can you take her with you on tour? Do you stick closer to home? What do you do? Yeah. Well, um, when Violet was a baby, it was really easy to take her absolutely everywhere. You just strap them to you and be off. Yeah. Um, and the first time I had to do a gig with her, she's 21 days old. Wow. And I had ill-advisedly taken her to Latitude Festival. I didn't know. I didn't know that it would be difficult to have a newborn. I just, I wasn't on the blogs. I didn't. <laughs> I, uh... I brought her on stage in the carrier, and I didn't have any material about being mum, so I just didn't mention it. I just had this very small, like, infant just hanging off me, and I was like, what's the deal with Cheryl Cole? Yeah, I just went on. And, like, I know. Um, what's your tour about? Because the title of your tour is Glam Role Model. This is the tour you're on right now. What is it? Is it yeah. about one thing, or is that just a cute title for it? Um, it's about uh, a myriad of things. I talk about glamour motos, yeah. Not a glamour moto, yeah. We're up vibes, we're up. <laughs> I talk about that culture. Uh, I talk about celebrity yeah. a lot. And I love, your, I love the UK tabloid culture. It takes someone to spin it around and talk about it, but I just think it's so fascinating and it's fun and it's really inspiring. So what do you like about it then? What do you focus on? Well, Cheryl Cole, for example. Yeah. <laughs> oh, you love her, don't you? <laughs> Yeah, love her. Yeah, absolutely love her, because she's gorgeous. <laughs> Isn't she gorgeous like a baby? Gorgeous. <laughs> I know I can't do a Jordy accent. I don't care. That, <laughs> was, a, that was a better show call than she does. Nah. Although she's <laughs> Fernanda Fafini now. So yeah, like, yeah. yeah. Knee Tweedy. I mean, she's got many names. Have as many husbands as you like. Just don't get upset when we can't remember all your new names. <laughs> <laughs> we don't have that kind of thing in Canada. We've got bears. Yeah. <laughs> and would you go back to Canada? Would, do you miss Canada? Is there part of you having been born there? Do you think, mm -hmm. OK, one day I'd like to return to, to my native soil? No. I'm, <laughs> I'm very proud to be Canadian. Uh, everyone's happy to see you everywhere in the world that you go when you're Canadian, but I don't want to live there. But I went to Canada. Canada was like a kind of half assed England. I mean, it had, yeah. you still got the Queen on the coins, and uh -huh. there's Queen Elizabeth Expressway. Ooh. and Oh, I love the royal family. I'm so glad to be here uh, amongst the royal... 
I might meet them. Have you certainly, Mr. Colin Firth, you've met the royal family. I've met members of the royal family, yes. <gasps> I've met a lot of members of the royal family. <laughs> Prince Harry? Or is that I've called? not met Prince Harry. I've no. met Prince Harry. The Duke of I Just Cambridge, gentlemen. I. <laughs> I. <laughs> tell you what I'd do to that kid, but there is no military training in the world that could prepare him wow. for it. <laughs> so you like a, you like a ginger-haired youth? He's the most successful change of luck story of a ginger orphan since Annie. <laughs> I, 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 mean, I like him a bit. You like him enough. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay, Catherine, lovely to have you here. Uh, I'm very pleased you came on the show. I'm a big fan of yours. Ladies and gentlemen, catch her on tour if you can. She's on from April to July. It's been extended, hasn't it? Mm. It's called Glam Role Model. The lovely Catherine Ryan, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Catherine, thank you. Okay. We don't have a lot more time, but we do have some guests that I'd like you to uh, maybe make as welcome as you possibly can. <laughs> they only need a two-word introduction. Take that! Quick chat before you perform first, because you don't have a lot of time to do too much screaming went on. Ladies, 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 ladies. I'm just a man. <laughs> uh, how is it now that you're settled into being a, a three-piece combo? Uh, I know you're getting ready for a big new tour, which will be exciting. Um, Jason, if you last September, so when you're now getting ready for it, do you feel like there's something missing, or, you know, is it easier maybe to choreograph or work, or even are you maybe looking for a, a new fourth guy? <laughs> It's different, definitely. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but at this point, you know, we've, we've kind of been working as a three now for over a year, so we've really got, got used to it. And I must say that the support, as you've heard... <laughs> You know, for, I mean, for nearly 24 years now, these guys have been with us, and wow. we really appreciate it, and it's lovely to be back, and we can't wait to play live. Uh, I'm assuming the door is open for him if he wants to return. You always said that. To be fair, you always said that about Robbie, and then he did come back for a while. Yeah. I, I'm guessing it's the same now, is it? Yeah, for both of them, I guess. Um, I mean, for us, with this record, you know, we're, we're in the middle of it now, and we're, we're enjoying it. And, and stuff, but we'd, you know, we, we hope one day we'd, they'd both come back. It just wasn't the right time for them. So we, you never know. Hey, congratulations in order. You got married fairly with you, didn't you? <laughs> <laughs> I love you. How are you finding that? Um, no, it's, I've lasted three weeks now, so it's going well. Three weeks, that's pretty <laughs> good. Big anniversary. Uh, you, and uh, any plans for. Well, <laughs> intercourse? I think not. <laughs> I think I think it's inevitable. The thing is, <laughs> I, 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 you're talking about babies now, aren't yeah, you? Yeah, yeah. yeah. No, no, I think it's going to happen. You yeah. know, it's going to happen. You That'd know, be I've, I've already got two children, but yeah. um, I think Jason was at the wedding as well. Wow, he was there. That's nice. Were well, you were there as well, weren't you? Yes. Yeah. And let's face it, that's not the only wedding you're going to be at because you've got this weird thing going on. You're going to be singing at a bunch of fans' weddings. I'm doing I'm doing a few weddings wow, this year. Wow. I don't know if I'm doing that one. <laughs> <laughs> And so, how, what, how's that come about? You know What's... what? It's a bit of fun. Yeah. You know, I always think Twitter. You know, it can get too serious. Let's have a bit of fun. And I just said one day, you know, if anyone's up for a bit of fun this year, I'm happy to come and sing at someone's wedding. Yeah. And of course, we've had <laughs> some unbelievable requests. Well, here's the thing: it's driving everyone else mad as well. On my Twitter feed, every other bloody one there is ask Gary to do our wedding. <laughs> 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 He does, he's not going to do what I say. I'm thinking there's going to be a few disappointed brides as well when they get to the end of their day. I mean, they're going to be all day they're going to be thinking. thinking any minute now. <laughs> <laughs> I do, yeah. I do. Well, let's get so in actual fact, what we're saying is, he's a heartless bastard. <laughs> <laughs> unless, you do, unless you do every Everyone, wedding. Everyone, <laughs> I think we should. <laughs> OK, so new album has been out for a while. Uh, incredible. Number one hit as well, of course, <laughs> as always. Um, and, you know, you, you guys are happy. You're going to carry on performing for as long as the fans want you to, I guess, aren't you? Hopefully. Yeah. 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 Hopefully. yeah. Hopefully. It's exciting. We, we lo you know, we love doing music, we love writing songs, we love doing the shows, so... You know, we want to carry on doing that. We're, we're going in the studio next week to start writing again, so... Uh -huh. it, it, you know, we're... we're... <laughs> OK, you're going to sing for singing. This is the song yeah. at the end of the movie, Kingsman. You had a song at the end of Stardust. You know what? Me and, me and Mark went to the premiere for Stardust in uh, L.A., and we were really excited. Bob De Niro was there, and lots of great actors and actresses. And we sat on the front row, and we, we watched this whole movie, and we were dying for the end. 
and the song started up at the end and it's never sounded as good as it sounded. 5.1, it was unbelievable. Sweetness. And the end of the song came and me and Mark just went, isn't that brilliant? And the whole theatre was empty. <laughs> Just does. <laughs> well, let's hope, certainly here in the UK, I know they'll stick to the end of this song at the end of the movie. You're going to do it for us right now. Ladies yeah. and gentlemen, take that. <laughs> Thanks to all my guests tonight, of course. Thank you, Colin. Thank you, Taryn. Thank you, Karen. Thank you, Catherine. And now, we we'll get ready for it from their number one album, Free. It is the All Conquering. Take that. <laughs> Ready for it. Tomorrow 